All right, so you brought a whole stack of research about how medical education is changing. And wow, it seems like technology is everywhere. Are we like on the verge of having robot doctors now? Ha <laughs> ha, not quite robot doctors. But yeah, we're seeing some really cool ways tech is being used. Like check this out. There's this study from the UAE where they made a chatbot VYs, specifically to deal with vaccine hesitancy. VYs, catchy name. But I don't know, can a chatbot really handle something as sensitive as people's worries about vaccines? It seems like folks would want to talk to a real person. That's what's so clever about this. They designed VYs with something called motivational interviewing techniques. So it's not just spitting out facts. It's actually having a back and forth, almost like a therapist would, hmm. to understand someone's specific concerns and help them work through it all. So more like guiding them towards making their own informed choice, not just info dumping. That actually makes a lot of sense. Though I imagine building something like that takes a ton of resources, right? You might be surprised. The study actually said that creating a chatbot like VWISE was pretty doable, even without a ton of funding or anything. Funny enough, the main feedback from users was they wanted its personality to be, well, less robotic, more engaging. Makes sense. A little personality can make those interactions feel way more genuine. Speaking of futuristic tech, there's research here about using the metaverse for vaccine education. Are we talking full-on Ready Player One stuff now? We're not quite there yet, but the potential is huge. Think about it interactive training, where med students can practice procedures in a safe virtual space. Or these virtual communities where doctors and nurses from all over can share what they know and what works best. Yeah, I see that it opens up so many possibilities for working together and hands-on learning, even if everyone's miles apart. Plus, think about how fun you could make it with games. Learning by playing can make even the toughest subjects way more interesting. For sure, but it's not all sunshine and roses just yet. Accessibility is a big one. Not everyone has the tech they'd need to even get into the metaverse. And then there are the obvious issues around cybersecurity, making sure people's health info stays private, especially in those virtual spaces. Right, gotta make sure this fancy tech doesn't end up creating even more inequality in who gets access to good healthcare and education. We're talking cutting edge, but we can't leave people behind. Okay, so chatbots, metaverse. What other tech is shaking things up in medical education? Well, virtual reality is getting seriously popular, and for good reason. One study we're looking at found that training with VR made a huge difference in how well surgeons could actually perform compared to the old ways of learning. Wait, so they can practice these super complicated procedures on virtual patients without any of the real life risk? That's gotta be a total game changer for how surgeons train. Totally. And VR isn't just for surgery. It's being used to teach doctors how to communicate better, how to be more empathetic, even to treat phobias in healthcare settings. Like, imagine a med student practicing how to tell a virtual patient some really difficult news and getting feedback in real time on how they're doing. That kind of practice is invaluable. It's like this safe space to get those crucial skills down without the pressure of a real patient right there. Mm -hmm. This is all super cool, but it's got to be expensive, right? Mm -hmm. uh, every med school can afford some top-of-the-line VR lab. That's true. Cost is definitely a factor. But like most tech, it's becoming more affordable over time. And when you think of the benefits, it starts to look like a really smart investment in the future of how we train doctors. Makes you wonder what the tech will be like in another 5, 10 years. But it's not all about fancy tech, right? You've also got some research here about using escape rooms in medical education. Okay, I got to know more about this. How do you even make an escape room educational, let alone medical? Well, it's not about finding hidden keys or whatever. These escape rooms are designed to really make you use your medical knowledge, think critically, and work as a team, all with a ticking clock, of course, because it wouldn't be an escape room without some pressure. So are we talking med students racing against time? to like diagnose a patient based on clues hidden around the room? Exactly. The studies on this are fascinating. They show that escape rooms can be a crazy effective way to learn. Students are way more into it, they're working together, and they're actually remembering stuff way better than they do with just lectures. There's something about that combo of pressure, problem solving, and teamwork that just makes it stick. Totally makes sense. It's like the ultimate test of what they know and what they can do, but in a way that's actually fun. And Kiermon, who doesn't love a good escape room. Speaking of shaking up how we teach, one of the wildest things I saw was this idea of students making their own WN tests. Instead of the professor writing the exam, the students do it. Yep, you got it. 
Sounds a little crazy, but there's more and more research showing how well this can work. It totally flips the script on how we think about education, puts the power in the student's hands. One study found that students who made their own tests felt like it was way more engaging and helped them learn the material better than just taking a regular test. When you really think about it, it makes sense. If you've got to create the test, you've got to really know the material, inside and out. You can't just memorize facts, you have to understand the big picture and how it all connects. Absolutely, it goes from just passively soaking stuff up to actively using it to solve a problem. It also changes the whole student-teacher dynamic. It becomes way more collaborative. Students have a say in how they're learning. And I bet it gives the teachers a much better idea of whether the students are actually getting it or not. It's win-win. Exactly. It shows how much potential these new ways of teaching have to totally change medical education. And we're only just scratching the surface here. Hold that thought. We've got lots more to unpack. It's amazing to see how these new teaching methods are really challenging the old ways of doing things in medical education. Like one trend I found really interesting is this whole thing with using 3D printing to make these crazy realistic anatomical models. Oh yeah, I saw those in the research you sent. They're so detailed, right down to the textures and everything. It's kind of mind blowing what they can do with 3D printing these days. It really is. And the response from med students has been really positive. One study found that students felt like these 3D models were way more engaging and easier to learn from than using the traditional specimens. They especially loved how the models could be color-coded to highlight different parts. Yeah, that makes total sense. Having a model you can actually hold and turn around in your hands, it just makes learning so much more intuitive, you know? It's one thing to see a flat diagram in a textbook. It's a totally different experience to hold a 3D version of it. Exactly. It bridges that gap between the theory and actually doing it. And it's not just about being able to see it. Some of these 3D models are so advanced, they can actually bleed and react to surgical tools, just like real tissue. Whoa, that's next level. It seems like with all this tech, the line between virtual and real is getting seriously blurry in medical training. But with all this focus on simulations and virtual reality and everything, do you ever worry that med students might become too reliant on technology? That's a really good point. It's all about balance, right? We want to use technology to make medical education better, but not if it means students miss out on developing those essential hands-on skills and that human connection that's so important in medicine. It's about finding that sweet spot where tech helps and enhances the traditional ways of training, not replacing them completely, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that actually brings up another interesting point. It's not just about how we're teaching med students, but also what we're teaching them. For example, there's a big push now for making sure med students are really good with information literacy. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, with a mountain of medical info online these days, knowing how to navigate it all, yeah. tell what's credible and what's not, that's more important than ever. Exactly. It's like a superpower in the digital age. Med schools are starting to really build this into their courses, teaching students how to find trustworthy sources, how to really understand those research papers, and how to stay updated throughout their careers. So it's about giving them the tools and the critical thinking skills to be lifelong learners in a field that's constantly evolving. Medicine never sits still, right? Doctors need to be able to keep up and adapt. You got it. And this whole idea of lifelong learning, it goes hand in hand with another trend we're seeing this rise of interprofessional education. Oh, you mean where med students are learning alongside students from other healthcare professions like nursing students, pharmacy students, that kind of thing. That's it. See, traditionally, medical education has been very siloed, each profession kind of doing its own thing. But in the real world, healthcare is all about teamwork. Tell me about it. I've lost count of how many stories I've heard about miscommunications between doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and how it led to mistakes or delays in patient care. But if we can get these different professions working well together right from the start, imagine the impact that would have. Couldn't agree more. And that's exactly what interprofessional education is all about. Breaking down those walls, building respect and understanding between different healthcare roles, and getting students ready to provide care that's more collaborative, more patient-centered. It's like building a healthcare dream team right from the get-go. Yeah. Each person knows their role, but they also respect what their teammates bring to the table, and they're all working towards that same goal, the best possible outcome for the patient. Exactly. And this collaborative approach, it's not just happening in med schools. It's shaking things up and continuing medical education, too. Right. One of the articles you shared mentioned the rise of those massive open online courses, the MOOCs. Those are huge now. 
MOSCs have totally changed the game for how healthcare professionals stay up to date. They offer this flexible, accessible, often totally free way for doctors, nurses, everyone to keep learning throughout their career. And it's not just about keeping up with the latest research. It's also about new technologies, communication skills, leadership, anything that helps healthcare professionals provide better care, really. Absolutely. And because it's all online, you can have healthcare workers from all over the world learning together, which is amazing for sharing knowledge across borders. It really is incredible to think that a doctor in some remote village anywhere in the world can log on and take the same course on the latest cancer treatment as some big shot specialist in London or New York. That kind of accessibility is amazing. It really speaks to how technology can democratize medical education. But at the end of the day, it always comes back to the human element, doesn't it? 100%. You can have all the fancy technology and cutting edge teaching methods in the world. But if you don't have compassion, empathy, if you don't genuinely want to help people. Mm -hmm. And you're missing what medicine is really all about. It's about using these advancements to train doctors who are not just skilled, but also compassionate, empathetic, ready to face whatever challenges healthcare throws at them. Well said. So we've covered a ton of ground here, from AI chatbots to virtual reality to escape rooms. What do you think is the biggest trend shaping the future of how we train doctors? It's really tough to pick just one. There's so much going on. But I think it might be this whole shift we're seeing towards making learning more active, you know, more engaging, more about what the student is doing and experiencing. We talked about escape rooms, VR, even students designing the tests themselves. It's about moving away from that old school sit and listen model and letting students really take charge of their education. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. And it's not just about keeping them entertained, right? It's about getting them ready for what it's really like to work in healthcare these days. Yeah. Where you got to be able to work on a team, think critically and adapt to anything. Exactly. The days of the doctor just making all the calls on their own, those are long gone. Now it's all about being a team player, being a problem solver, being able to keep learning your whole career because medicine just changes so fast. No kidding. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of medical education, what's the one thing you really hope our listeners take away from all this? That the future of medicine is looking bright. With all these amazing ways of teaching and with technology always advancing, we have a real shot at training a new generation of healthcare professionals who are not just good at what they do, but who really care about their patients and are ready to take on whatever challenges come their way. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> this has been an awesome look at the exciting world of medical education. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, keep those brains buzzing and never stop asking questions.